Thank you. Well, as already mentioned, um, there was some data apparently has been uh, revealed yesterday. So I'm curious whether it's going to be the same with what I'm going to present in a minute. Um, what I'm going to tell today, I will tell a little bit some kind of opportunities about the development of mobile pay payment at the moment for travel industry, what kind of opportunities can be kind of divided into different type of mobile payments afterwards in my presentation that I will try to tell. So bear with me in a while and then in the end I will of course try to sum up with what are the opportunities actually, what kind of opportunities for you as a company, as, um, as a provider company in tourism industry. Well, before I start with mobile payment itself, why mobile payments? Why is it so important? First, let's take a look. Let's take one step back to the digital, digital uh, development in tourism industry in, in general, actually. But these are actually some uh, developments that we can find at, 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 the, at the moment in tourism industry. You see a lot of social media, how influential it is, for instance, in social and in uh, tourism industry. Chatbot, maybe you also familiar with that, that function that you can have um, uh, kind of automated customer relationship, so to say. Uh, Internet of Things, you've seen a lot as well, the development of Internet of Things. Once you're at this place, your devices are connected to Internet anyhow, so that you can access many things. Artificial intelligence, been a lot of development over there as well, try to identify uh, customers' needs. Customers' journeys are influenced by that as well. Uh, yesterday we had a discussion about that, that in terms of artificial intelligence, in terms of uh, 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 Internet of Things, you have different kind of phases as well, uh, the pre-arrival, during the stay, and after sales kind of phases for hospitality industry. Robotica. Over there, we saw already a nice robot playing. You can even play around. Um, you can try to play with it. It's kind of cool. And of course, the mobile payments itself. Well, the funny thing is that these developments, the social media, chatbot, Internet of Things, and so on, they are all influencing mobile payments. To give you some illustration about what has been uh, kind of the triggers, I'm, I'm giving you some examples, okay? Uh, one of them is in Westfield, London, who use a lot of um, uh, kind of transforming actually this, the, the hotel room into shopping mall, sort of, okay? A lot of uh, uh, IoT on it. It becomes a point of sales. You can purchase a couple of things that are being uh, shown in your hotel room. You don't need to do anything, you just need to point, and then it's immediately showing you the price. You can check it out, and you can complete your purchase at the same time without leaving your hotel room. Another example that we also have in Amsterdam, there's a hotel called City Hub. For the guests, once you're checked in, you will get a bracelet. The bracelet is equipped with chip, and with this kind of chip, you can have all your transactions during your stay in the, uh, in the hotel. You can do your payments using these chips. You can do your transactions with each chip. And the nice thing as well with this chip, it is connected to internet. So for, for the guests who would like to explore the city as well, the chip will become kind of um, um, the, how to call it again, if you, the hotspot for internet. So imagine that if you're going to the city center, you don't want to use your mobile phone, your own mobile data for rooming. The bracelet that you get from the, from the hotel, it's connected to the, to the internet. So, so then you can use that connection, you can use the bracelet as the hotspot for internet. And of course, again, the mobile payment side of it, it contains all your data you can use to pay all your transactions during your stay. Now, having the set with these developments, yes, some information, some data we found 
means that you can see, oops, you can see that the penetration, the, the mobile users is increasing. This is the data from January 27, uh, 2017. 66% of internet users, of mobile use, of data users are through mobile phone. 66%. So it's close enough to what 60% already mentioned just now. From this 66%, as we can also see, the web traffic of different devices, 50% is done by mobile phone. So this is just to illustrate, and, and that's actually an increase of 30% uh, compared to the previous year. So it's also an indication how the potential of mobile users into different applications. Now, what we have found as well, 18% in travel industries, 18% of all online uh, sales worth 67 billion US dollar in 2015 was done through mobile. And having these transactions on mobile, we also found out that within your mobile, you have nowadays mobile wallets where you can, have, when you, where you can actually have your different loyalty cards as well. You have loyalty cards for your uh, um, supermarket, your loyalty cards for travel uh, 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 airlines, boarding pass, event tickets, and so on and so forth. Having that said, we see the trends. The trends is really increasing, as you can see, um, between 2011 to 2015, or now it's 2017. So in the past five years, we see that the trends of mobile users compared to the normal online users, it's taking up the total of online users. And it's expected to even grow further that in 2020, there are more mobile users, more mobile travel sales power done by mobile, uh, by mobile in, instead of the uh, normal online. Now, getting into the three types of mobile payments then that I have um, uh, identified. I try to classify the three, uh, the, the mobile payments into three types of mobile payments. The first one, what I call as the uh, operating system based mobile payment. So in a way, it is depending on the operating system of your smartphone. For instance, if you have a Apple, if you have iOS, that means then your transaction is based on the iOS platform, which means the marketplace is provided by the, st the same platform. Now, what does it mean then, actually? Because in this case, the iOS is the first tier of the marketplace of being the payment service provider. Why is that? What, by the time you g get into uh, the iOS, you need to give your data. You need to give your payment uh, details, which will be used once you have your purchase within that travel mar uh, that, that market, the app market. It will be used by iOS. The second tier is the in-app purchase. So based on your purchase on that app, you might want to have some in transactions again within the app itself. Then the purchase that you have, it is called the second tier kind of purchase, because then it will be de deducted through your account as well, which you already paid, which you already install in your uh, uh, operating system. To give you some examples here, um, already mentioned 
Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, they provide you with the marketplace, different apps, so that the, the apps can be purchased in those uh, market, in their own market, as the first year, as the payment service provider, and the, um, the, the in-app purchases going through the uh, operating system as the first year. The second type, the second classific classification is the proximity type of uh, mobile payments. Again, if you take a look at your smartphone, you have the wallet, right? In your wallet, you can install your payment uh, uh, details, okay? Proximity, then it is in combination with NFC uh, device, the chip NFC, so that you can, through the swipe, oh, through the swipe, you can make the transaction again deducted from your wallet. Now, the interesting part of this is that your wallet, as already mentioned before, it's not only about your payment details, but it can also contain of your loyalty programs. It can also contain your um, uh, systems of or, um, the airlines of loyalty programs which is connected again to your data. And finally, we call the peer-to-peer -peer kind of mobile payment system. Some might say that this is kind of a, a, a banking app, some kind of a mobile banking app, because it, the transaction is between peer-to-peer, -peer, between users directly. It's money transfer between users. But nowadays, there's even a third party in here as the payment service provider who is making this possible. Some examples are Fanmo and Square. They provide the, this possibility. So instead of going into details through the, um, your receiver in making the payments, they provide you with the possibilities, becoming the third party in providing the possibilities to, to, to the service in making this payment. Why they want to do that? Why do you think that you need the third party kind of uh, payment service provider instead of your mobile banking? One of the reasons is that you would like to have security in having your payments, right? And then you might say, okay, if I do the payment through my mo own mobile banking, then the receiver who, whom I might not want to have as a contact, or it's just a one-time transaction, they might get my bank account. So instead of giving my bank account, I, go, I create an account on this payment service provider so that I can make the payment without revealing my own bank account. So in a way, the privacy and the security is guaranteed. You can just top up your account over here to make the payment as a payment service provider. Now, having these three types of differences, the three differences uh, 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 system in the payment system, in the mobile payment, we have learned that first of all, payments are actually driving the customers. It's, not an, it's, it's no longer that customers are depending on the companies for the payment options, but the payments, they are really driving how the customers are going to make the transaction, okay? It's related to the data. Once the customers, they already made the payment, the company, whom receive the, the receiver of the payments, they will have the customers' uh, data in terms of their transactions behavior. With this mobile payment, then you can also analyze, you can also see how the behavior of the customers is based on the transactions, and in a way, you can also use that to get in touch with the customers.
it's all, it also means since you already got the data about the customers through the payments, you can send the customers about offers, about the marketing, about the promo. The customers then can also use those vouchers that you send to them. They can put them into the wallet and they can use them in making the transactions once they are already at your premises in the in the uh, either it at, at airlines or at the hotel and the most interesting uh, opportunity over here is that new business in ventures that you might have with the through the payment service providers with another service providers so i can imagine that for instance for airlines Having the transactions of customers can be connected that after the flight, they would like to have hotels and car probably. Now, based on that, you can also say, why don't we collaborate together, creating one package offer together as a partner in providing these offers to the customers that they can also download into the mobile wallet so to sum up the opportunities for the travel for the tourism industry through mobile payments we've learned that at least 60% increase or 60% volume in the payment behavior of the consumers we see some uh, opportunities in terms of how the users might combine their payment uh, details with their loyalty programs. And you can also see how this can really drive how they can um, consume. Because based on the payments, it tells you the consumption behavior, meaning new business opportunities will be created and therefore grab the change. Any questions? I will be around. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day.